Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still friends in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right 
I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and Hello and welcome to the class of 2023's 8th grade celebration. Thank you to Miss Smith, Mr. Follett, Dr. Earhart, and all of our families and friends for attending our celebration this morning. I know that some of you have traveled a long way to be here, so thank you so much for coming. On the topic of coming a long way, it's worth mentioning that the class of 2023 has also come a long way, metaphorically, or for those like myself who don't live in Cary, literally as well. At the beginning of sixth grade, nobody knew each other, well, except for the Raleigh school kids. <laughs> it was hard to get a conversation going with other students because we had no shared experiences to talk about, and for a lot of us, this was the first time that we had changed schools. We were told it would be easy to make friends because everybody would be in the same boat. Unfortunately, being in the same boat wasn't always enough to stop the waves of disorientation and isolation. The first real break in the storm came in the shape of the sixth grade field trip to Camp Haines. We were forced into communicating with each other as we navigated trails, canoed across a lake, and went zip lining. Although it felt awkward at first, the benefits soon became apparent as we were able to connect with each other. People who had previously sat by themselves in silence now shared a chuckle as they watched canoes flipping over and created crazy dinner concoctions. By the time seventh grade rolled around, we had become more comfortable with each other's existence. Whether it be through musical rehearsals or sports practices, the grade definitely grew closer because of the activities we did together. And we alone, among all the seventh grade classes in the history of the middle school, got to experience the infamous Camp CA when Black Mountain flooded. The very name, Camp CA, still brings groans from my classmates. I can only imagine what the teachers must have thought as they led us down lightly used paths in the back acres of CA and kicked around a soccer ball with students. They probably have responses slimmer to ours when Camp CA is mentioned, but we are grateful that they tried to save the day. Eighth grade has been the culmination of our time together as a class. And for me, the moment where it became clear what our class had become occurred during the history trip to Gettysburg. We were sharing stories and jokes that we'd amassed over all the years. That was when it hit me. The class of 2023 was like a family. Granted, we're a large, fairly dysfunctional family, complete with estranged cousins and their exes, but we're a family nonetheless, with common ties and experiences that link us to one another. And that's really amazing. The strangers who knew nobody in the sixth grade are now a family who knows everybody at least a little. And as we head off to the upper school, this time we'll have a head start because we'll be going there together. Thank you. Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance Life is like a book. Sometimes we must close a chapter and begin the next one. As we prepare today to close the middle school chapters of our Cary Academy story, let's take a look back at the first pages of the, of the sixth grade and the amazing times we had, valuable lessons we learned, and the deep friendships we formed. I think that's a great metaphor, Cameron. Our Cary Academy experience is like a book, with each chapter bringing new challenges and opportunities for growth. It's not a metaphor. I'm sorry, it's not a metaphor, it's a simile. No, it's not a simile either. I've got our actual sixth grade book. <laughs> Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, it starts with our very first day at a new school and how we got to know everyone. See how nervous we were when we didn't even know each other's names or what class we had next? 
And here are the teachers helping us through. It only took us a few pages to get used to everything in our new school. Yeah, here we are walking into the right classroom at the right time and saying hi to Kate. And this time it really is Kate instead of someone else. Wow, look at how huge the middle school building was. The second floor felt like it was light years away. The library seemed gigantic too, not to mention the high schoolers we saw before lunch and PE. Cary Academy seemed so big back then, but now it seems just our size. Oh, the next chapter is field trips. Here's the Durham Bulls game. Whether you actually watched the game or just hung out with your friends, we all had a great time. And our world religions field trip was one we will never forget, especially because of the freezing rain we had to run through. Intramurals, remember way back in sixth grade when we couldn't play on a sports team? We could manage one, but if we didn't, then we could participate in an intramurals instead. Foursquare, capture the flag, and even tag. That was so much fun. We're running out of time, so let's skip to the index. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, picking our art majors. Learning how to use our tablets. Working on our citizen science project. Performing at the talent show. Aw, our first dance. Shabazz. That was really cool looking through all of those memories. Sixth grade was so much fun. So were seventh and eighth grade. In fact, both of those grades were like books too. Great, do you have your copies of those books with you too? Don't be silly, Tasia, it's just a simile. Thank, Thank you. you. Of all the factors that have made our time in the middle school enjoyable, and there have been quite a few, the most important factor might be the amazing community here at CA. And of all the elements that make the community here at CA amazing, and there are quite a few, the most important factor may be our friends. It sounds like a cliche, but it really is true. It's hard to imagine middle school without our classmates. Whether we're running back from gym class late to A block, hanging out during break, or trying to come up with examples for celebration speeches, friends have always helped us laugh through the tough times. Like when you trip going up the stairs? Wait, that wasn't so great. You and Alex were there laughing at me. But we helped you up, remember? Okay, I guess that's right. There really is nothing more important in middle school than having friends that are loyal and supportive. Remember how we used to stick around after track practice for a little extra work on high jump? And remember when Coach Wagner said to you, I think you're supposed to go over the bar, not under it? That's when I knew I had a lot of learning to do. But you got better. We all did, with each other's help. All the times we needed encouragement from someone, friends have always been there to talk to. We were always chatting about that difficult project that none of us could figure out how to do. Like when we had to code a rocket to Mars or build pasta towers in seventh grade. But even if one of us was just talking about something funny that happened in history class, we were always there laughing by their side. In this way, over the years, our community has grown stronger and stronger. The other students in this grade have been so fun and outgoing, there has never been a dull moment. Our friends and classmates have made middle school so special because we always went through the tough times together. Like a team. And so to wrap this up, like a team. One, two, three. Go Chargers!
Stressed, tired, lazy, rude. It's fair to say that at some point in these past three years, our parents have probably said these words in reference to us. And to be honest, they were probably right. But we have to give them some credit. They have probably also congratulated us, said we're strong, smart, incredible, artistic, and talented. Our parents have been there for us and have let us know they are here for us no matter what we decide to pursue at school, now and in our futures. Whether it be realistic reminders, motivating mantras, or life-saving lessons, you have helped us make our way through middle school and have gotten us ready to make more and more and more memorable memories. We've been given the opportunity to explore all that we can do, but also the space to make mistakes along the way. We know we aren't the easiest to put up with, so parents, Thank you for sticking by us. By having you help us along the way, we have been able to become so many things and have so many irreplaceable experiences. We know that whatever we decide at the end of the day, you will be there to support us. By the way, since we're still kids, you probably shouldn't expect us to acknowledge how helpful you've been again anytime soon. Yeah, it feels a little odd saying all these nice things about our parents. It does, but we're almost finished and the best part is still coming. One other thing our parents have taught us is that we shouldn't define ourselves by only one thing. And that message was confirmed by Disney, so we know it must be true. High School Musical, an amazing tween hit and a large focal point of our childhoods, backed up our parents' message by showing us that you can be and should be more than one thing and that you should pursue all that you can. You can be part of the robotics team and play a part in the school musical. Or you can be a jock on the basketball team. And bake a mean creme brulee. We can fly as high as we can. We're soaring. We're flying. breaking We're soaring. Soaring. <laughs> Okay, okay, we aren't actually in High School Musical. So we'll save you from the singing. But parents, you have opened doors for us, figuratively and literally, allowing us to see all the possibilities, break the status quo, and define ourselves as we choose. We want to say thank you for all the hard work you've put in to make these past three years a time of our lives we won't forget and to prepare us for the next big game. It was you who quizzed us the night before a big test. It was you who taught us to be ourselves. And it was you who reminded us of all the support we had if we fell because we really are all in this together. So thank you and get you head in the game for four more years of this craziness because once a charger, always a charger. Thank, thank you. you. We represent the gift committee of the class of 2023, and as our committee's name might suggest, we were in charge of finding a class gift for the school worthy of everything it has given us. In order to reach that point, we organized a middle school bake sale where everything sold was made or at least purchased by students. That bake sale made $703. Middle schoolers do love their baked goods. So our next question was, what do we do with all this money? 
In past years, the class gift committee has been responsible for gifts such as the stained glass windows over the doors of the middle school and a variety of benches that have helped shape our campus into what it is today. But what is the one thing we might actually be missing? And the answer came to us. A collaboration table, of course. And for the celebrating eighth graders listening to this thinking, they really just said collaboration table, give us a second to explain our decision. In the eighth grade hall, we have some soft seating and a squishy spinning chair that makes up our shared space. And while they may be very comfortable, they are not the easiest to work on. A collaboration table is, well, according to the dictionary, it's the action of working with someone to produce or create something on a piece of furniture with flat top and nor, one of our legs providing nor. the service. What she's trying to say is, a collaboration table is a place where people can come together to work on different assignments. But when it comes to Cary Academy, a collaboration table offers an environment where discovery, innovation, collaboration, and excellence can take place. For all the last minute studying that has happened in that little corner, it's only fair we give it a table for the scrambling kids to work on. And so, as our class leaves the middle school, we leave this table behind as an aid to the grades after us so they can have a place to collaborate on projects when working in the hall. Thank, Thank you. you. Tonight, I'm gonna have myself a real good time. I feel alive, I, 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 and the world, I'll turn it inside out, yeah. I'm floating around in ecstasy, so don't stop me now. Don't. Stop me, cause I'm having a good time, having a good time. I'm a shooting star leaping through the sky, like a tiger defying the laws of gravity. I'm a racing car passing by, like Lady Godiva. I'm gonna go, 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 there's no stopping me. I'm burning through the sky, yeah. 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I'm traveling at the speed of light I wanna make a supersonic man out of you Don't stop me now I'm having such a good time I'm having a ball oh, Don't stop me now If you wanna have a good time Just give me a call Don't stop me cause I'm having a good time Don't stop me, yes I'm having a good time I don't wanna stop at all Oh, I'm burning through the sky, yeah. 200 degrees, that's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I'm traveling at the speed of light. I wanna make a supersonic man out of you. Don't stop me now, I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball, oh, don't stop me now. If you wanna have a good time, just give me a call. Oh, don't stop me, cause I'm having a good time. Don't stop, yes, I'm having a good time. I don't want to stop at all. Today marks our last official day as eighth graders. From now on, we will be, wait, what will we be? I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, I guess we're, ooh, transitioners. Uh, going over the river, through the woods, waving hi to grandma on our way to the upper school. As transitioners, there comes a certain time when you look back on the path you've traveled. So we're walking on a path. Yes, the path of middle school. Okay, so what do you see while walking the sixth grade path? Hannah? Yes. I came here in seventh grade. You know that, right? It's important for me that you know that. <laughs> right, Hannah? I, <laughs> Maris, I knew that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh -huh. well in that case, you need to do the sixth grade portion. Well, fine. In sixth grade, we were learning how to walk. 
The shrubs and the trees were scary. We jumped at every homework assignment and social interaction. But as we walked farther, we became more comfortable with our surroundings. The greenery around us became our friend. Except at the lunch line, salads were avoided at all costs. Well, for some of us, that's still the case. I eat salads, sometimes. Anyway, the sixth grade walk was full of exuberance for school activities like conducting food drives, shopping at the Neon Bashi Marketplace, watching the talent show. Karaoke. What, now? That's not a good idea, let me tell you. Wait, wait, no, no, don't, don't sing. Wasn't there a karaoke-related crime in the sixth grade? Oh yeah, someone stole a karaoke machine. That's cool. You know when else you definitely should have been singing karaoke? Seventh grade. Really? That's your transition? So during the seventh grade walk, we had it all figured out. Unless you were new, like me, then you just had to fake it. A little bit into our seventh grade walk, we came upon a clearing. This was no ordinary clearing. This is a clearing where sports were played. I think all the new sports we could play really took all the energy out of us. That's true, but sports were a great way to let out some pent-up frustration with school, possibly learn something new, and teach us skills that we may need later in life, like competition, sportsmanship. How to hit your teammate with a tennis ball. No, Hannah, we talked about this. You don't hit your teammate with a tennis ball. Un until the season's over, at least. Well, the season's over? No! Don't hit anyone with a tennis ball, ever. Anywho, seventh grade was the time to explore new possibilities in athletics. And eighth grade was the time to dive headfirst into academics. Especially with projects. Yes. After we got over the initial excitement of the sports clearing, we moved on to take bigger responsibilities and fend, mostly, for ourselves as we continued down the eighth grade trail. Long-term projects were given out frequently. I've decided to dub this the year of the projects. No, put those away. That's okay. ridiculous. I'm not wrong. Although I have to admit, the magazine project was my favorite. I like the video essay better. Maris, aren't we forgetting something? Science final projects? I think someone made a cake once of the digestive system. A cake of the digestive system? Strange. It was tasty. No? Okay. No. I feel like our walk is finishing too quickly. All the trees and bushes and flowers of our childhood are behind us, so where are we now? Maris, where are we now? Wasn't that rhetorical? No. <sighs> We are standing at a bridge, looking across at the new trail with pricklier shrubs, taller trees, and scarier flowers. Deep. And sharp rocks and snakes. Oh, I don't like snakes. They're like wavy worms of death. No, oh, I'm scared, Maris. Hannah, who knows? Maybe some of the rocks are diamonds and the trees are... Nice trees? Yeah, they're nice trees. You know what? Maybe the next trail won't be so bad. I still might not be ready, though. Maris, I don't think we have a choice. The middle school trail has kind of reached its end. And there's a bridge. You remember the bridge. Yeah, I remember the bridge. Yeah. I think we need to cross over. We need to cross over the bridge. What about the wavy worms of death? I don't see any wavy worms of death. Well, then I guess it's time to walk on over to the upper school. Yeah, I agree. But not till August. Oh, please. I don't want to go now. It's summer. Yeah. Oh, and wait, one more thing. Don't forget to do your membean. In the beginning of sixth grade, 
the class of 2023 was faced with a lot, a vacant lot on which we needed to build. As we held that first brick in our hands, the idea that one day we would stand in a city we had built seemed unimaginable. But our teachers and our families reminded us that cities are built brick by brick, and so we began the project. While the process was not without difficulties, their advice and wisdom combined with our efforts helped us to create a strong foundation. After a while, we found ourselves becoming more efficient builders as we gradually improved weak spots in the framing, which allowed us to expand and add on to our basic dwellings. By seventh grade, our town had begun to take form while still reflecting our own individual styles. As we kept on reaching for new heights, we encountered challenges that we were unable to face alone. Rather than backing down, we constructed walkways from one building to the next, lending support to one another. We both helped and received help from other builders, which allowed our town to grow quickly. By the end of the seventh grade, we had progressed from a series of individual structures to the beginning of an interconnected and bustling metropolis. Throughout the eighth grade, we continued this process, implementing new designs and integrating additional technologies to add on to the infrastructure already in place. By dedicating ourselves to this spirit of innovation, we have flourished as a vibrant, inclusive community. Our individual buildings have many stories, but they also benefit from the bridges built to connect us with others. While we have much to be proud of, this is merely the beginning. Next year, we will continue to expand with new residents possessing their own unique perspectives and ideas, moving to our community to become our neighbors and coworkers. We can walk through our city together, discovering new avenues beautiful plazas, and, of course, some bumps in the road. As we look around at what we have all constructed, one thing is certain, that together we have built a place that we can truly call home. Thank you. Our class is like a tree. What? Our class is like a tree. Our class is a tree. No, it's like a tree. It's a simile. We've had a lot of similes today, and this is another one. OK. How are we like a tree? Well, trees grow and change with the years, just like students going through middle school. Also, many different kinds of trees come together to make a distinctive forest, just like our class is made up of many different individuals that come together to make a one-of-a-kind class. Oh, and of course, we're leaving. <laughs> you know, middle school is also like vegetables in a way. It's necessary, but it's not always appealing. There will always be those times when you wake up and just don't want to go to school. But then you arrive, your quiz is postponed for another week, and everything is all right with the world. On the other hand, there's always an instance where you're actually excited to go to school, but then you quickly discover you have to run the mile in PE, and all of a sudden, your day isn't going so well anymore. Either way, middle school is like vegetables. It isn't always what you choose. But it's necessary to learn and grow. And to eat your artichokes. Throughout our middle school career, the students in this class have been like technology. We always work hard to do what's told of us. That is, when we work. You know, computers are never to be trusted to work properly all the time, and students can be the same way. Like technology, some days we just don't function. You forget how to conjugate a verb, what two plus two is. By the way, it's three. You forget to put goggles on in the science lab, what the Declaration of Independence was signed. June 14th, 1999. And all that other good stuff. Middle school is also like cleaning out your grandma's attic, because you never know what you're going to find, whether it's a musty sock or a priceless treasure, and what adventures you will behold along the way. And it's like a haiku. Each grade brings different things, like haiku lines add up to a full story, whether it creates a serene picture or announces a fun-filled snow day. Or maybe your class is like... It's sort of like... I'd say it's kind of like... It's kind of like the class of 2023. Despite all of our imperfections, each one of us is bright and smart. Today we can reminisce about all the, our shared moments where this class has thought, moved, and worked as a whole unit. That's not a simile. That's just us. That's okay. Not everything has to be a simile. Thank you.
mistake Before I leave with the worst of me Give them no reason to stare No slipping up if you slip away So I've got nothing to share No, I've got nothing to say Stay, don't stop out of the sun if you can sound on the outside always looking in will I ever be more than I've always been cause I'm tap tap tapping on the glass waving through a window can anybody see is anybody waving back This morning, you've heard about some of our accomplishments at Cary Academy. All that we have learned in the middle school so far is just part of the journey that is to come. As we look forward and gaze eagerly upon the next four years of our lives as upper school students, we undoubtedly will feel a mixed bag of emotions. We might feel nervous, the workload, the standardized testing, and the entirely different environment that is the upper school. We might feel excited, the newfound freedoms we will have, a relaxed dress code, freedom to choose our classes, and maybe even the ability to choose out what we want to do in the future. And we might even feel a little sad, leaving an environment we had adapted so well to, possibly even saying goodbye to friends who are moving on to different schools. But above all, I hope we all feel eager to move on and to our next step of our journey. As we go on to the upper school, we will certainly encounter many more trials and tribulations, but we will face them head on and be ready to learn from our mistakes. Our years in the middle school have already started to build a strong foundation for our futures. They have given us the necessary tools we will need to succeed. We have learned how to better manage our time, how to work with others, and most importantly, how to get things done. As we have grown and developed, and as we continue to learn and experience new things, we will never forget what we have gathered from the middle school. Today can be considered a milestone, a tick on the measure of great success that I'm sure many of us will find in our lives. I know that the class of 2023 will continue to innovate, to succeed, and to pave new paths for ourselves. As we continue on our journey, just remember that the roads are limitless and opportunities are boundless. Thank you. As we all know, middle school is done, so it's time to say our goodbyes. Right. My first goodbye that I want to share Excuse is... Excuse me? Our first goodbye? Oh, of course, that's what I meant. Speaking of goodbyes... Oh, right. First, I'd like to say goodbye to the middle school. Isn't that what this whole speech is about? No, I'd like to say goodbye to the actual building itself. Each room left memories and lessons that will always stick with me. From room M106, my sixth grade advisory, to my advisory this year in M224. So many memories in each room. Ugh, this is gonna take forever. I know, right here. Let me, let me get this back on track. I'd like to say goodbye to my favorite rooms. My sixth grade language arts classroom. Last year's math room. This Can year's we move science. On? 
I personally would like to say goodbye to the furniture in those rooms. The couches were the best ideas came to me. Oh, and the colorful chairs with wheels. I love those wheelie chairs. I didn't even have to leave the chair to go to the printer. Just raced on the hall. You might want to say goodbye to racing around in the chairs too. They frown upon that in the upper school. Oh my, moving on to something more important. Right, like those goldfish in Mr. C's room. I'm gonna miss those. Or the hamster that I wish Miss Panhorst had. No, I meant the teachers. You know those people who stood at the front of the classroom for the past three years and taught us everything we know? You're right. Looking back, they really have taught us a lot. I may not know how to do taxes, or build a fire, or cook a meal that doesn't consist of ramen, but at least I know who the generals in the Battle of Manassas were. Wait, who were they again? First or second Manassas. There were two? I mean, I, I think. I'm not sure. I kind of forgot everything after the history final, but I did know them at some point. But seriously though, we actually have learned a lot, and I'll always be thankful for that. I still remember sixth grade material, like how to divide fractions and how the ancient Mayans lived, and most importantly, how not to reply all to an email. Speaking of sixth graders, have the sixth graders gotten smaller? I think that's just us getting taller, or at least I hope it is. I guess that means that now it's time for us to say goodbye to being the oldest in the school. I'm definitely not gonna feel tall next year. That's for another time though. I think it's actually time to wrap this up now. You're right. Do you guys have any other goodbyes? Oh yes, I'd like to say goodbye to the middle school. Um, I already did that. No, not the building, that would be ridiculous. I mean the whole thing, the community, the atmosphere, the ambiance, the whole feeling of being a part of a larger group, almost like a family. I'll miss that. Me too. So then, I guess I'm done. You mean we're done. Oh. I have a goodbye to say. Right, we're done. Sorry about that. That's okay. I have a goodbye. So, is that it? Yeah, I guess so. Hello? What, Nithya? What is your goodbye? Yeah, it's the last one. You gotta make it good. Uh... Come on, Nithya. Yeah, Nithya. Oh, I got it. Goodbye. The sun is surely sinking down And the moon is slowly rising So this old world's still spinning around And I still So close your eyes, you can close your eyes, it's all right. I don't know no love songs, I can't sing the blues anymore. But I can sing this song, and you can sing this song. be long before another day we gonna have a good time and no one's gonna take that time away you can stay as long as
starts and the endings are important parts of life. As celebration approached, I thought back to the ending I had experienced in elementary school, fifth grade graduation and the transition to middle school. My school was the place I had grown up in for over five years, filled with the adults, kids, and classrooms I knew best. From finger painting in kindergarten to an overnight trip to Washington, D.C., my elementary school was one of the most important places to me, a place I was sad to say that final goodbye to. Silly band trading was the highlight of my second grade, while wearing bows was an important fashion staple in fifth. Our class learned how to work together and accomplish a goal. We swung on the swing sets and played cross the ocean during recess while reading stories and watching Bill Nye the Science Guy during class. While from starting a new school in third grade to reaching the end in fifth, I learned so many valuable lessons that I brought with me into sixth grade and onwards. While we all had different experiences throughout our elementary school careers, we likely all shared the common apprehension and excitement of approaching middle school. Sixth grade seemed like it was light years away from anything we had ever experienced there. We were wary of the new beginnings that middle school would bring. New buildings, new classmates, new teachers, and new assignments. Like in elementary school, it's possible that some of us are a little wary of what upper school might bring as well. And we may be a little sad to leave eighth grade behind. We shouldn't, however, be upset that our time in the middle school is coming to an end, but instead, we should look fondly back on the memories we have made and the lessons we have learned as we take confident steps forward towards a new beginning in the upper school. From our first day in the middle school to our last, the first times playing on a school team in seventh grade to our last end of season parties, getting ready for the first dance in sixth grade to taking final pictures at the photo booth, learning about the Mayans in sixth to completing our US history finals, sixth through eighth grade has been a time full of beginnings and ends. As the saying goes, history always repeats itself. And for our sake, I really hope it does. Middle school at Cary Academy has been such an impactful three years, filled with friendships, learning more about ourselves as individuals, and gaining knowledge for years to come. Next year, we'll be like our sixth grade selves all over again, only now with a little more experience. We hope that our middle school history finds a way to repeat, but also advance, with us learning the privileges that come with our new beginning in the upper school, one that comes with free periods and free seating at lunch. It's amazing to think that we are going to be in upper school next year. I used to think that in making the transition from elementary school to middle school, I was leaving those six years behind. However, I realize now as we conclude our middle school experience, we are not leaving the memories we've made, the friendships that have grown, the knowledge we have gained, but rather taking it with us as we start again. This transition isn't a sad occurrence, but instead an exciting one as we are moving on to a new start. The memories, bonds, and knowledge we've gained will not be left in the classrooms, fields, and hallways. Instead, we will take them with us. We will keep them and add to our CA memories as we move throughout the upper school. While we are sad to leave the familiarity of middle school behind us, we should focus more on the new beginning in ninth grade. As Ernie Harwell said, it's time to say goodbye, but I think goodbyes are sad, and I'd much rather say hello. Hello to a new adventure. Thank, Thank you. you.
I am honored to have the opportunity to speak with you this morning. I want to take a moment to thank the parents, grandparents, and other family members that are here with us today for your eighth grade celebration. Thank you for the continued guidance and support of your child. To the employees, if you taught, coached, advised, nursed, counseled, or these students, please stand. My two favorite days of the year are the first and last day of school. Celebration this morning has already proved to be an award winner. The talents exhibited by our speakers and performers bring a bittersweet conclusion to the year and your time in the middle school. Nor and Lexi, thank you for the class gift of a collaboration table that will be added to the eighth grade hall. As I thought about parting words of wisdom that I'd like to share with you today, I thought, why would they listen to me? What new message might I have? What can I share that you haven't already heard from your parents or teachers? I pondered this question for several days and then I thought I would look to the writers of Big Bang Theory for inspiration. As Abby mentioned, another group of folks that have come a long way, another large dysfunctional family. Many of the students have sat in my math class will remember that this show is a favorite of mine. I giggle listening to Sheldon explain why 73 is his favorite number. For those that don't know, according to Sheldon, the best number is 73. Why? 73 is the 21st prime number, its mirror 37 is the 12th, and its mirror 21 is the product of multiplying 7 and 3. And in binary, 73 is a palindrome, 1001001, which backwards 1001001. Along with that important math lesson, we've learned that friendships are the key of life. Choose friends that appreciate your uniqueness and still decide to stick around. In the final episode, Sheldon and Amy win a Nobel Peace Prize in physics. As mentioned by Elise and Bella, the most important part is the loyalty and support of friends. With his friends in the audience, the true lesson comes in Sheldon's acceptance speech. He says, I was under a misapprehension that my accomplishments were mine alone. Nothing could be further than the truth, he said. I've been encouraged, sustained, inspired, and tolerated, not only by my wife, but the great group of friends anyone ever had. Finally, let's move on to the elevator in their building. The elevator has been broken since 2003. Yes, well before any of you were born. Lots of memorable conversations take place while walking the three flights of stairs to their apartment. Episode after episode after episode. In the final episode, after 16 years, the elevator is finally fixed. This is a big deal because Sheldon does not like change. When the elevator finally gets fixed, he feels a bit rattled at the kind of life-altering changes happening around him. To me, it symbolizes that new possibilities have arrived and nothing remains constant. When you were in sixth grade, your parents were told that middle school is like a roller coaster. There will be ups and there will be downs. Ironically, one of your final activities as an eighth grader was riding the roller coasters at Bush Gardens. To stick with the morning theme of similes, the elevator is like the upper school. It is now your turn to get into the elevator and see what possibilities await. You may take it to any floor that you want. As Cameron and Tasia mentioned about the middle school, the upper school may seem light years away, but you are starting a new chapter. You are in control. The possibilities are before you, but you have choices and you may travel from one floor to the next. Look at the choices before you, but don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. Embrace the new challenges that high school provides, along with the freedom. Samantha and Danica stated, don't define yourself by one thing. There's not a star in heaven that you cannot reach. To conclude, I'd like to quote Penny from Big Bang Theory. The only thing that remains the same is that things are always changing. I now invite Mr. Snively and Ms. Mazzella up for the presentation of certificates.
It's my very great pleasure to uh, read the names of these folks. And uh, each one will have a chance to be recognized individually, but it would be great if you would hold your applause till the end of each line, uh, where there will be a moment for some well-deserved well clapping. I'll let you know when it shows up. Madison Sidney Ross. Kate Becker Sandroider. Kainoa Vaughn Kalibi. Elise Baxter Boyce. Brian Jason Fang. I can get it. Amy Eleanor Snively. Samantha Ryan Dorfman. Tasia Nakunj Wasadev. Lily Susanna Baston. Abigail Grace Matana. Cameron Ross Friedman. Danica Joy Ginsburg. Nor Alum, Joshua William Kendall, Emma Audrey Esposito, Andrew Troy Shaughnessy. Anya Teja Abai Kumar, and Leah Marie Wiebe. Andrew Eugene Epperson. Joshua Robert Taylor. Annie Lamb. John Richard Perkins III. Karina Lee Shashadri. Henry Cheeping Koff. Deborah Zarahun Lemma. J. Young Sim. Nithya Nalamothu. Hannah Marie Serwin.
Maris, Anissa, James. Haley, Bella, Chandler. Ava Wenyoung Sue Elizabeth Tanner Azrak James Asher Lucas Jenna Wood Pullen Michael Leonard Singleton. Lauren Madison Leinberger. Rohan Nangalia. And Harrison David Komen. Evan Zhu, Bennett Cole Messer, Daria Sky Thompson, Landon James Catronis. Evelyn Marie Haldane. Mia Ann Nesbeth. Adiel Yadija Solomon. Ella Elise Gupta. Ford Kerr Kuderi Rhoda Nithi Yakowenko Delaney Tyne Bundy Yunlong Yu Caroline Ellis Parker, Benjamin Evan Natan, Zoe Sophia Koo, Michael Frank Wessels. Cohen Chow, Alexandra K. Butelis, Charles Bennett Haynes, and Jason Thomas Sparks.
Ryan Alexander Noonan. Vikram Phoenix Camaretti. Christian Alejandro Herrera. Chelsea Lynn Lee. Richard Simpson Alexander Hager. Matthew James Shirker. Alexandra Grace Ryden. Joshua Cole Ingalls. Haitian Huang. Jackson Thomas McCall. Alexa Lynn Davila. L. Salam Hausman. Danny Bandong. Nishant Jeevan Pai. Aaron Christopher Swift. Nusha Tarani. Kennedy Scott Swires. Evan Bale O'Connell. Brooke Melody Wu. Reese Taylor Bloden. Ibrahim Elbeck. And Cameron Tatum McClanahan. Alexander Thomas Rousseau. Anderson James Colantoni. Rohan Miguel Geralt. Michaela Catherine Lewis. Emerson Richard Sauls. Nikhil Sanjay Jagannath. William Finan Corky. Uinsa Joe.
Evan Nicholas Wirth. William Lyndon Hankins. Emma Christina Walsh. Matthew Gabriel Ferranti. Jaden Jackson Chavla. Keshav Ryan Alapati. Owen Andrew Tache. Sophia Isabella Pignataro. Ryan Joseph Blau. William Lewis Caps, Ariana Juliet Laughlin, Ryan Vijaya Nagaraj, Jared Anderson Cooper. Boquan Lee. Brooke Renee Bevan. Eric Francis Bright. Declan Canby McCallum. and Charles Craig Zutmolder. I would now like to ask Mr. Follett to join me on stage. Mr. Follett, it is with pleasure that I now present to you the class of 2023. Thank you, Ms. Smith. So every year, I marvel at the incredible work of the middle school faculty and staff. They do such a phenomenal job preparing the students academically and effectively for the joys and challenges of high school. Please join me in applauding them. As well, thank you, parents. You've entrusted Cary Academy with your children, a trust that we do not take lightly. The celebration is for the students and for all that they've accomplished, but it's also for you, marking that important milestone in your family's lives. So congratulations and kudos to, to you for all that you've done. And now, class of 2023, in a few moments, you will physically leave this auditorium and symbolically leave the middle school. For those of you who will not be joining us in the upper school next year, we know that you will have bold, enjoyable adventures in high school, and we wish you success. For those of you who will be joining us in the high school, in the upper school. I'm looking forward to that first day next year when you're introduced to the 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. You bring so much. Yes, your intellectual gifts, but you also bring your singing voices, your thoughtfulness, your concern for each other, your sense of humor, similes. Oh, that warms the, the cockles of my English teacher heart. Thank you so much. Class of 2023, you're a talented group, a fact that you've demonstrated over the past few years. And we don't want to rush the summer for you. Enjoy the next few months. Relax, have fun, complete your summer reading at some point. But know that we are excited for you in August, and we hope that you're as excited as well. 
a few other points before we finish. Um, the chairs in the upper school do have wheels, so have fun with that. I hope that you continue to find family in the upper school. I'm pretty sure that you will. You're going to have lots of opportunities to sing and dance and act in the hallways and on the stage. And the trees really are nice trees in the upper school. So again, thank you. Congratulations on your middle school successes. And know that we are excited for you this August. Now, are you ready? Good. Stranger